Super excited to chat with you guys tonight or today. Man, I, I must need some coffee. I'm all over the place. Uh, but very excited to chat with you. I know one of the common uh, pieces of feedback and concerns that we've heard from a lot of practice owners lately is around salaries uh, for doctors, it's hourly uh, income for support. Um, and, you know, we're just excited to chat with you about that and bring some more, you know, light, help answer your questions. Um, as always, we've got Michaela here with us today. How's it going, Michaela? It's going great. I think I've had a little more caffeine than you maybe today because I knew it was June 15th, like middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, definitely probably more caffeine uh, for me. But, you know, we'll kick things off. We'll dive right in. What are you hearing from from practice owners out there right now when it comes to salary, when it comes to hourly rates? I know one of the common challenges facing a lot of practices right now is just, of course, the shortage of talent. It could be just because, you know, there might be a high demand position that you're looking to source for your practice. It may also be just some concerns or the availability of support. I know a lot of feedback that we've received is around some concerns regarding, um, you know, some of the unemployment uh, stimulus that the government had put out there that's caused some challenges and some shortages. Um, you know, what are you hearing from practice owners out there uh, in, in, in the world right now? So there is a lot of conversation happening, I would say, around compensation, both on the hourly and salary side, as you mentioned. And the common question we continue to hear over and over again is, what are other people offering? Is this correct, what I'm hearing? And how do I compete when I am a smaller independent business. I'm not a part of a corporation. I'm not a part of a private equity group. So how do I compete? But the questions that just keep coming almost weekly now are what is real and what is false? Because what the candidates are telling me seems to be totally out of whack and nobody really knows how to handle that. So that's been a lot of the conversation that we've been having as of late. Yeah, one of the common, I think, pieces of feedback that I hear pretty routinely is, you know, the these these doctors, what they want. I mean, I never made that kind of money. Uh, some 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 practice owners may still not be making the type of income that certain associates are out there requesting. Um, you know, for a practice owner who's kind of facing that right now, you know, what kind of feedback would you give give them? You know, what would you what would you share with them? So first, I would share that the unfortunate reality for you, if you graduated in 2007 or 2008, is that it costs more today for you as a business owner to hire talent equivalent to maybe the years of experience you had when you started. And that simply boils down to supply and demand. When you have a high pressured, highly technical job, and there aren't that many people that can just pick it up and learn how to do it on the go, Today's market is demanding a higher wage than what we saw 5, 10, and definitely 15 plus years ago. And that seems to be the biggest pill to swallow when it comes to working with practice owners is getting over the first sticker shock when it comes to what people are making today. And that's not just limited to your doctor positions. We're also seeing it on a technician level that the people who are licensed or certified in your state for their particular type of skill are in higher demand and making more money no different than doctors really now they're not making as much as a doctor right but the hourly wage that we're seeing at those specialized technician roles is definitely higher today than what you were paying one to two years ago so the first thing you're going to have to address is your sticker shock when it comes to what the market is paying and what the market is demanding due to supply challenges across the board when it comes to talent today. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one thing that's really important to keep in mind too is, you know, especially for some of uh, our practice owners in, in, in the practice owners that I've spoken with who, you know, have been uh, a practicing doctor for, for let's say longer than 10 years. So if you've, you've been out of school for longer than 10 years, you've owned your practice, maybe you've been a practice owner for five or more years, just like Michaela mentioned, you know, the starting salary is obviously substantially higher, but also the cost of education is substantially higher too. Um, you know, for some of our, we'll call you more experienced practice owners, you know, who've been in practice for 20, 30 years, 
we recognize it is completely different now than what it was at a certain point of time when you were starting your practice. Um, even when some of you were out job hunting yourself, you basically had to go door to door and beg for an opportunity. That's not the case anymore. And the best thing I can, you know, best, best, uh, I guess, analogy, I love analogies. The best analogy, it's like, hey, look, we all recognize that at some point in time, gas was 99 cents, right? Well, gas is not 99 cents anymore. Same thing with like a bottle of Coke. Coke at some point in time was five cents. Coke costs over a dollar now if you want to get a, get a bottle of Coke. So everything has increased. You know, we've heard a lot about inflation within the market. If you go to, you know, CNBC, listen to any type of, of, of stock news, you know, the, the economy is talking about inflation and the cost of dollar going down. But in the reality is that the cost for education for a lot of these newer graduates has gone up exponentially. So for a lot of doctors, let's call it 10 years ago, they weren't coming out with two to $300,000 in debt, whereas today they are. So they need to be able to make an increase in salary to make up for that additional debt and, and cost that they've incurred to get this fantastic education to help you and your patients and clients in your practice. So the first, most important thing is kind of step one, getting over the sticker shock, right, Michaela? Being able to move past that initial sticker shock because we have to put things in perspective, right? Things didn't cost the same as they did 20 years ago. The same thing when it comes to talent, it no longer costs the same. What would be something else that you've heard from you know practice owners um, that are struggling right now when it comes to adapting to the current market conditions for talent? What am I hearing when it comes to adapting to the current market conditions? Yep. Besides reluctance? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that reluctance that's yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of general frustration when it comes to how do I stay in the black with my business? How do I pay myself as a business owner and pay this doctor who might only have a year of experience to join my team? How, how do I do that all? And so there's this hesitation, this reluctance to embrace the new reality and what some might call the new norm for the cost of an employee today in your business. Mm -hmm. And if you've got questions, there's a little link in the in the, the Facebook Live. It says ecam.live slash 4653C2. Um, click on that link. That way we can see your comments. If you've got comments, if you've got questions, click on that link, enter them in the comments section. We'll help address those live with you on the call right now. We see we've got a handful of you guys out there. Excited that you're here. Um, we want to hear your questions. We want to hear any concerns, comments you have. We'll address those as we dive into it because we know that this is a challenge that you're facing, right? And this is something that we want to help you overcome in the industry today because the reality is, is for a lot of independently owned practices, which is, you know, that's who our focus is, is to help and support is that independent practice owner. We know that you're competing with corporates. You're competing with private equity. And we've seen some of those numbers floated out there that some of these large corporations are, are offering to attract top, top top quality candidates and top quality talent. And we know that for a lot of practice owners, there's just no possible way. It's not in your reality to be able to offer certain compensation packages. But Michaela, wouldn't you agree that for a lot of candidates, it's not always about compensation? There's so much more to the total, you know, we'll call it the total compensation package. Oh, for sure. I mean, we've helped multiple clients negotiate candidates who are taking a pay cut of upwards of $20,000 in their base salary to join their practices. And I know that that's really hard to believe. If you're sitting over there, you've been searching for one year, two years, some of you, unfortunately, even much longer than that to bring a new doctor onto your team, find it hard to believe people are willing to take a pay cut in their base salary, which is what one would consider that guaranteed compensation that they're going to achieve every year. But when you have a better culture, when you have a better schedule, when you offer a better commute to an individual, and those are just things off the top of my head, you can win in this all out war for talent today, when it comes to your total package that you offer, um, both compensation wise for your candidates, but also in the quality of life category that is hard to put dollar and cents to, but they're there and each individual will know what they're willing to give $5, $10, $10,000 to get a better quality of life, a better mentorship opportunity, a better culture fit with a team. So leaving a toxic environment, um, it happens. And we, we have helped multiple people negotiate that process. Absolutely. So if, if you find yourself 
facing kind of some of these challenges, competing with with corporates, competing with private equity, just frankly competing with other practices out there, kind of all gunning and offering large salaries, larger salaries than you expected. Hit that little like button for us. Let us know on you know in in the comment section. Type in a comment. You know, click the like button. Let us know this is what you're facing. Because again, we want to be able to help you guys address these challenges. You know, one of the things that we did early on, you know, today is we talked about associates, right? We talked about doctors and kind of their compensation. And Michaela, you had commented on some of the hourly um, positions that are also facing not only a shortage, but but a competition for for credentialed, licensed, registered, you know, technicians, those individuals. What would you recommend? I mean, because the strategy is a little bit different. There's some similarities, right? But the strategy is a little bit different when it comes to hourly versus somebody who is, you know, MD, a DVM, an OD, you know, a PT, you know, some of these more advanced positions. When it comes to competing for talent in an hourly rate standpoint, what are some of the, you know, top challenges you're seeing in the market today for independent practice owners? When it comes to competing on the hourly side, it's actually very similar to competing on the associate side. So we actually had a conversation with somebody just last week who was speaking with candidates for licensed technician opportunities that were making eight to ten dollars more per hour than what her maximum range was. And the sad reality is you're not going to get somebody over a hump when it is an eight to ten dollar gap on the hourly side. It is much more challenging because the way people live is oftentimes a little different, um, especially when you can't compete on a benefit package either. So the best thing to do is to gather intel in those situations, because if you are a member, um, maybe you have a partner in business, so you are a co-owner in your practice, and you're trying to convince your business partner, hey, man, we are really lagging in our pay rates. And every time I talk to a candidate, I hear that they're making 20% to 30% more than our entry-level rate is or more than our maximum rate is for our position. I would encourage you to gather that intel to come together as a team. If you are a sole owner and you hear from your practice managers that are having these conversations with these hourly individuals over and over again that the candidates today are asking above what your maximum pay rate is for that position. Mm -hmm. I'm going to challenge you to really evaluate, are you competitive in today's market on the hourly side as well? And then the second piece with that is once you know, okay, my pay rates may be lagging the market a little bit and you evaluate your business to determine the best strategy to address that, then you can also start to understand the differentiators for your practice in the benefit package that you might offer a licensed technician in this example, or somebody working at your front desk, et cetera. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's kind of like we mentioned, there's so much more to to total compensation just than just hourly rate. Uh, that said, when you're talking about an hourly position, you know, uh, extra a dollar here, three dollars, eight to ten dollars. I mean, this is talking quality of life differences for for a mm -hmm. lot of those individuals. So it's very tough if there's that large of a delta to compete. Um, what I've seen it happen of late too is that you're getting these more advanced, more uh, technically, you know, licensed, registered um, positions coming together and then discussing overall. This is what we're making. If we all threaten to leave, maybe we can get get that increase. And that's what we want to avoid at all costs. We don't yeah. want them having to essentially create a little mini union inside your practice in order to get what, what they need. It's so important as practice owners, as business owners, for us to constantly evaluate what is the market rate for the talent on our practice and or in, in, in our business, I should say. And the reality is that some people, you know, they may be fairly compensated right now. Some may be overcompensated based on some of their performance. And of course, some may be undercompensated. We always have to continuously analyze because the last thing that you want to do is lose somebody who's a, a, a successful team member for you, maybe even considered exceptional, and they leave because of a dollar or two an hour, when in reality, it's going to cost you so much more money to go out there and attract that new person where you're going to have to pay them even more anyways because of today's market rate, plus all that time lost in between when your person left and your new hire comes on board, 
plus all the training. I mean, it ends up getting really costly, doesn't it, Michaela? Oh, yeah. It's a significant cost to your business to go out and continuously recruit for positions in the time lost, in the clients you've been unable to serve, in the retraining of the people that you bring back into your team. There's a significant cost to your business when it comes to retaining top talent. So on the hourly side, you really have to understand what your market offer is. You've got to do some analysis on that and determine if you are competitive or not. Because to Trey's point, when they form a group and they come to you and they say, we all want to make $25 an hour and you just say yes to that, you aren't thinking about the downstream impacts to your business. What's that going to do to your overall budget when you do annual increases? What's that going to do if you are one of the businesses we work with a lot who actually offer these hourly positions bonuses as well? And they and they bring them in to profit sharing at the end of the year. Well, now you're bonusing off of potentially a higher pay range than you would be where you are today. And you could have made a smaller adjustment that's not going to have this domino effect for the long term of your business so really something to monitor and get ahead of is okay what's the market today where am i at in relation to the market today you can't rip the band-aid and and jump a gap that might be five dollars plus an hour but you might be able to make incremental steps and communicate with your team today um, to to help move beyond where they are and retain the ones you have while also now seeking top talent to join your business mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and with that, I want to circle back to the associate piece. So the the the, the doctor role, or you know, we call it you know physical therapist. You know, we call it dentist. Whatever your most advanced position in your side your practice. Uh, one of the things that I have seen a lot uh, when practice owners are struggling when it comes to the salary is the quantification of the value of what this individual is going to bring to the practice. So what I mean by that is that oftentimes there's a little bit of a sticker shock, like we talked about earlier. It's like, hey, we're just arbitrary number thrown out there. We'll call it $120,000. So, hey, we're going to say the base pay is 120 k Well, for some practice owners, never in a million years could they imagine paying more than $90,000 for this position. But what we're missing is that the additional capacity this individual is going to bring is actually going to let you not just make that extra $30,000 up in Delta, but the potential to make $30,000 in revenue every single month for the entire year. Not to mention, when we start factoring in as a practice owner, as a business owner, our time and how much time that's gonna free up to allow us to do more valuable activities too, that just multiplies and compounds even further. So as you're thinking about the salary, you're thinking about your positions, and you're thinking about what I'm comfortable with, make sure that you're also thinking about the quantification of the actual ROI that person's going to bring to your practice. Because, you know, if you really took $30,000, and that's not a small amount of money, but you took $30,000 and you spread it over the course of 12 months, and then you look and asked yourself, said, hey, okay, how many more patients does this individual need to treat in order just to break even on this? You're going to find that it's actually a really, really small number, but the benefit to you Maybe not. Maybe has zero impact on on reducing your workload, but it has all the impact in the world in your stress level. In knowing that now you're able to see and treat more patients, now you're able to potentially even leave work on time. Maybe you've got that coverage that you need in your vac for for that vacation that you have coming up. And so again, that small little amount of money on the front end that's going to make all the world in the difference between them saying potentially yes to you or at least even utilizing your offer as a comparison point to another practice, it's gonna be all the difference in the world because oftentimes right now for a lot of doctors, a lot of associates out there, they're getting three, four, five, seven offers. What we're seeing is that they're going to a city, they're interviewing with every single practice that's hiring right now, and then they're using these offers to figure out which one, which pieces they like the most to create the ultimate package for them, which is no, nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's that's if you were in their shoes, I'm sure we would all do the exact same thing, but we have to recognize the market that we're in. So what we wanna do is we want to eliminate that bidding war. We want to eliminate that competition. And we do that in a lot of different ways that we get into a lot within our, our program beyond just you and within our support structure. But when it comes to just that salary piece, you wanna make sure that you're at least even in the ballpark. Would you agree, Michaela? 
Yeah, absolutely. You've got to look at the gain to your business, bring somebody in, maybe subtle tweaks that you could make into how you manage your appointments in a day. But also for you yourself to trace points, if you've been trying to get one day, just one day a week that you can dedicate to the business side of owning your business, What is that going to bring you in the long run? If that individual comes in and takes all of the clients that you typically would have been the only one that can serve. So it's really about doing the cost benefit analysis of, okay, if I increase their base salary by 30 grand in the example of Trey, what's that over a 12 month period? Because oftentimes people sign one year contracts, sometimes a little longer. Then what is that going to give me in terms of volume of clients that I can serve time back in my own day to manage my really going to hurt you to not make that change, to not make that increase, or if it's really ultimately going to help you because you found the right person for your business who fits culturally and you want to bring them in to, to add to what you already offer today. Absolutely. We hope you guys found this immensely valuable. Whether you're watching this live with us right now or you're coming and watching this this replay later on this week or even in in the months to come, if you've got questions on salary, go down to the comments section, enter in the word salary, and we'll reach out to you and see how we can best support your questions. Um, If you got a question right now too, while we're hopping on here, you can pop it in there too. We're happy to answer any questions live with you. Um, But we're going to be doing this every single week tackling topics that you're facing within your practice, within the industry right now to help you overcome any people challenges, any recruitment challenges, any retention and team development challenges that are occurring in your practice today. So every single Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern, we're Eastern, I should say, we're going to be here live with you. Um, Really enjoy chatting with you guys today. Anything, any closing statements, any closing comments or or words of wisdom, Michaela, you share with with our, our, our listeners and our watchers? I would say when it comes to compensation, get out of your own head and partner with somebody to help you determine the best path forward for your business. Because I have found time and time again, working with multiple business leaders and owners over time, that once you sit down with someone and do the math and look at it side by side, you're likely to come to the right resolution for you and the candidate. But you just have to partner with somebody and get out of your own head. That's awesome. If you find yourself, you wanting some help or you need a partner, just go to the comment section, type in BJU, myself or one of our team members will reach out to you. I will be happy to help. Hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll chat with you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.